today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how to add text graphics in After Effects. It's probably one of the most common things that you will do as you work with After Effects. It's hard to get through any project without needing to add uh, some textual graphics. And uh, the dialog box that pops up this time remembers the last project that we were working on. And uh, so let's just click on that and uh, we'll be brought back to the project that we left in our last tutorial. And you remember we had disabled or, or turned off the top layer that had the video. Let's turn that back on by just clicking on the little box here that has the eye. If you are familiar with Photoshop or some of the other Adobe products, you'll recognize a lot of these uh, icons and symbols that are sprinkled throughout the program. And uh, you'll be able to pick up After Effects even faster than those who have never worked with Adobe before. Now the first thing that you need to do in order to add some text to our composition here is to first of all go up to the toolbox at the very top of the program here. You'll maybe recognize some of these symbols from Photoshop. The one we're looking for is the T. And once you've selected the text tool, you can click anywhere in your composition. Just with your mouse, click on uh, there. You'll see a couple of things happen. First of all, we've added a third layer to our composition. Right now it just says empty text layer. And uh, if we were to able to see this a little better, we would see that we have started uh, a little cursor in our window. Uh, something that you can do to maybe see what you're doing a little better is uh, change the percentage to fit here and this will expand out our, our viewing window. And now if we look a little closer we can see that uh, little red cursor there. If we start typing it will show up, uh, the text will show up. So Ori And uh, as you first type in, it uh, may not uh, be the right size or the right color in order to see it well. Let's uh, just, tip with your mouse, go ahead and select that like you would in a word processing program. Select the whole text. And let's go over to our side panel here and uh, let's increase the size of the text, first of all. And you'll see over here, it right, is now at 96 pixels. If we take our mouse uh, over here to this box and uh, click down with the mouse and start sliding it across, sliding your mouse across, you'll see that our text grows. And uh, to change the color, just click on the color box there. Let's maybe make it uh, a white. If you're not seeing this uh, text box over here, perhaps what we should do in order to make sure that we're working with the same tools and the same tools that I have showing up here are also uh, what you're seeing on your screen. Let's just go up to this little arrow up here and this is a selection of presets that you can quickly change your workspace area depending on the task that you're working on. And uh, let's click on Essential Graphics and see what happens there. Uh, that's probably not quite what we're looking for. Let's check uh, what else we have here. Let's maybe uh, click on Text here. And uh, if you do that on your computer, then we'll, uh, we should, in theory at least, have the same exact uh, screen and workspace here. And that way we can all be kind of on the same page. So let's go back and select our text again, or it looks like it's still uh, selected. And uh, we'll see that here you can change the font that you want. You can choose whether you want just regular text uh, on some fonts and, or bolded. Let's maybe go with bold. And then let's maybe put it in all caps, and you can do that, the little symbol down here, all caps. We'll just click on that, and it'll change the uh, text to be all caps. Well, as we look at this, uh, we see where we have positioned this. Uh, the white color of our text is getting a little bit lost in the white waves there. So we want to move that, uh, maybe bring it down a little bit. There's a number of different ways that you can move text or move any graphics in After Effects. In fact, uh, it's such a mature product that there are probably five to ten different ways of doing the same task. And that helps people coming from different programs to be able to very quickly figure out a way that uh, they're used to coming from other software. Let's say uh, you are a Photoshop guru Probably what you would do uh, naturally is just go back up to your tool belt up here and go to our selection tool. And once that's selected, you can then just point at this layer and uh, move it around. 
Now, in video, as you probably know, there is what's called a title safe area, and you want to try and make sure that your text stays within the title safe. And if you want to see uh, where that title safe area is, just go down to this little box here, click on this, and uh, click on the title action safe, and we'll see the guidelines pop up there. And so we can bring this down a little bit and still be in title safe. So we can see that a little better now. In order to give it uh, just a little bit more definition, we might add a subtle drop shadow to the text. And the way that you can add drop shadow is go up to the effects palette up here and go look for an item called perspective. And one of the options under perspective is drop shadow. And by default, after effects, we'll uh, apply a certain level of drop shadow, a certain uh, specific size, but uh, you're not stuck with that. You can go and change the opacity of the drop shadow so it's not quite so bold there. Let's drop it back to about uh, 30 or so. But uh, let's maybe add a little bit of distance to this and then increase the softness of it and there that's just a little bit more subtle and yet it adds a little bit of definition uh, to the uh, text all right and then the next thing we need to do is decide how we're going to bring this text on to our scene and let's open up our text graphic here let's click on the little arrow here and we'll see that just like our uh, other media there's a transform button there and this will have some uh, basic options of uh, how we can animate this text on. And uh, let's say, for example, we want to just fade on, dissolve on. Let's go to our Opacity tool and click on it once. We'll see the node appear. And let's bring it the opacity right down to zero so that it's no longer showing on the scene. And then over the course of about a second and a half or say two seconds let's bring that on and all you have to do is just bring this node and start bringing it back and bring it right up to a hundred percent or if you want to be more subtle you could uh, maybe only come up to say 60 percent and that way you see some of the the video underneath showing underneath the text hit our space bar So that's dissolving a text on, but what if we want to give it a little animation? What we can do is add um, some nodes there as well uh, for uh, anchor point and position. And let's maybe even do scale. But the only one that will actually change is position. Let's uh, move this and we don't see the text, but we see the little wireframe that's surrounding it. So we can see where we're positioning this just by moving our numbers there. And then let's take our timeline cursor down the stretch a ways, say down to um, the eighth second. And then let's just slide that across and position it where we want it to end. And remember, we like to ease in. So let's just right click on that and easy ease in. All right, so that is a simple dissolve and a motion animation in. But let's say we want to get uh, a little more fancy. Let's go up to the Effects palette and let's add a blur to this. And we can do maybe the directional blur. And uh, once we've placed that on, we now need to go into the effects. We see that the directional blur effect has been added, but it at this point is not doing anything. So let's put our timeline cursor back uh, at the beginning of the animation. And let's open this up and let's bring up the blur to, oh, say 150 and uh, click on the blur length so that the node appears. And that tells After Effects what, how we want to start that in. If we were to bring it in now, we'd see that uh, it is quite blurry. Uh, the direction is wrong. It's going up and down. So let's change the direction of this so that it's at 90 degrees on the angle. Maybe just better to click on that. And we could maybe start that blur just into the animation a little bit more. Let's move that node over. But uh, let's have it uh, ending the blur uh, right in sync with the 
uh, animation. And so we're lining our timeline cursor up with the end of the animation. And here's where we'll go back to our blur length and change it back to zero. And so now it is not only moving in, but it's blurring on. Let's maybe see what happens if we change the uh, size of the uh, text at the same time it's coming on. Let's just maybe lift this up a little bit so we can see what we're doing a little better. We've already added a node for the size. And uh, so all we need to do is position our timeline cursor over that starting node for so size or scale, we should say. And uh, you can confirm that the timeline cursor is lined up with the node on the timeline when the uh, keyframe or the nodes here turn blue. If we were just one frame over, you'll notice that the, they're no longer blue. And you'll know that if you, if you start changing the scale at this point, uh, it would be adding an additional node, and you don't want that. So before you make any changes to a node that's already there, by lining up the timeline cursor, make sure that you're seeing the blue there. And then we can just go over to the scale. And let's maybe drop that first one down uh, a little bit, say to 65. And then bring it over to the, the final point there. And let's uh, bring that back to 100. And now it's not only blurring, but it's growing as it uh, moves on. All right, and once you understand the principles of, uh, you know, this is just a very simple animation, but once you understand the principle of what's going on here, you can create some very interesting animations. You know, you could have each one of these characters, for example, on a separate layer so that each character is being animated in uh, at a different size or rate or blur and uh, you can create some very interesting effects. Now, in addition to creating your own animations, uh, After Effects comes with a lot of very interesting presets that you can use. Let's go up to um, the menu item called Animation, and let's go down to Apply Animation Preset. And here, there are a number of presets. If you go into the folder there, and let's take a look at Text, uh, inside the Text folder, and let's say animate in and there's uh, a lot you can try out here let's maybe choose the fade up characters open that you'll see that uh, under text we have this animation appearing here the little nodes show up in the line here let's open this up and let's open up animator one and also range selector and here we can change the duration of the animation we could say take the first node and bring it back a little bit. And perhaps what we should do is disable the directional blur. And let's take off uh, the animate in. So let's play that. And uh, the text is now going to animate in one character at a time. And if you think that uh, is just a little too slow, you can change the duration by just grabbing one of these nodes and bringing these closer together, and that'll animate in a lot faster. Okay, maybe just to show you one more here. Let's go back to our animation, apply animation preset. Let's go back to blurs. There's one here called bullet train that I sometimes use. See that uh, the nodes have come in again, and uh, by default, it's just a little bit too fast for me, so I'm going to open this up and uh, bring these apart a little bit. Let's take a look at that. And what this does is add a little uh, blur uh, to the text as it animates in. All right, well, that should give you a few principles of how to add text. As we work on some of the other projects, we'll probably show you some more things about graphics as we uh, bring them into different scenarios. But for now, I believe that does it for adding text graphics in After Effects.